or so, 200 feet or thereabouts, you're already going 100 miles an hour. And you're shaking and rattling and rolling and wow, it's just a magic experience. You wish you could bring everybody with you and show them this because it is, it's an awesome experience. I would tell you, don't be surprised if this is more than anything I've ever experienced in any airplane I flew for sure. So if you're the type of person that has a need for speed, you are really going to love this simulation. It's going to be a great experience and you're going to really feel like you're going somewhere fast. I hope you have a lot of insurance. <laughs> to the Shuttle Launch Simulation Facility. I'm Charlie Bolton. I've flown the shuttle into space four times, twice as a commander. My colleagues have put together an interesting little experience for you today. You're about to go on a high fidelity launch simulation, and I am going to help you get through it. See, before any launch, all astronauts have spent thousands of hours being tested and trained in simulators, a lot like the one you're going to ride. You'll be riding in a special module that fits right into the payload bay. But before you go aboard, we better go over a few basics. Launch preparation for your mission would have started accelerating here at KSC months in advance. So let's cut through all that and move you way closer to launch. I'll start your clock at, say, uh, four hours before liftoff, when it's still dark out. Before you got suited up, the shuttle's external tanker ET was fueled up. The ET holds fuel for the shuttle's three main engines. Inside the ET, there are actually two separate tanks. One has liquid hydrogen at 423 degrees below zero. The other, liquid oxygen at 298 degrees below zero. They start really cold. But when those two liquids begin the shuttle engines, <laughs> you'll find out. About two hours before you launch, you boarded the orbiter through what we call the white tank. As you climb through the hatch, that orbiter already seemed like it was a living, breathing thing. Arm and left. Everybody else is smart enough to get out of the air in advance, and you and your crewmates are strapped to the reason why. Within 400 feet of the pan, flames and heat from the engines will kill you. Within 800 feet, the sound will kill you. Within 4,000 feet, the snakes and alligators might kill you because all that low frequency vibration really scares them up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up to T minus 10 seconds. Those sparks are hydrogen free burners or sparklers. They help prevent a fire or explosion by burning off any excess fuel around your vehicle. At T minus 6.6 seconds, after the main engines start, you'll feel the shell sway forward. But don't worry, it's engineered to come back to vertical before you go. That's what we call the twang. You're getting a lot of power from those main engines, but you're going to need even more to get to orbit. That's where the solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, come in. These guys were the most powerful solid fuel rocket engines ever flown. The SRBs ignite when the countdown gets to zero, and believe me, you'll know it. Once you fire the SRBs, you can't turn them off, so you're going somewhere. You better just hold this up. Now, here's how all that's going to happen. on the way back down. 
It's the only part of the shuttle system that wasn't designed for reuse. Congratulations, you made it into orbit. That's assuming, of course, there were no malfunctions along the way. Naturally, we have hundreds of contingency plans in case something does go wrong. Take a moment to memorize these now. Got it all? Good. Our time here is up. You ready? Because now you have to take your chances in the sim and hope the sim supervisor goes easy on you. Now it's time for you to experience the sensations of launch firsthand from inside the shuttle. See you aboard.
the right of the bus, about a mile and a half away. Space Shuttle Discovery positioned on Pad A, being prepared for the April 5th launch date. Of course, our Space Shuttle vehicles are pretty much considered a reusable piece of equipment. We can use those shuttle orbiters many times, many different types of missions. We also have the capability